The Vecchi's uh, field monitoring program that we're currently running is a pilot project. Uh, the city, in collaboration with a um, consultancy, um, Environment Mapping, or EMS, have developed some in instrumentation. Um, in collaboration, we're testing them in a protected area before we put them out in an unprotected area. So they're essentially about 45 instruments scattered around the Vecchi's area in the limestone reef. Um, from that we can get current measurements, um, there are a couple of, there's wind data, wave data, a couple of some water quality stuff. It's all a small scale project of what we intend to launch over the summer and winter period coming up uh, in the next few months. That forms part of an 18 to 24 month program where we will be assimilating all the data and effectively we're trying to understand how the Durban bike region operates in terms of currents, um, whether it's contaminants, be it from ships or from rivers um, spreading along the surface or even on the floor looking at the morphodynamics in terms of how the sand moves. Um, Durban has a very strong bypass system and that uh, has quite a big effect on all our beaches and part of our department's mandate is to maintain the beaches and understand the functioning. My name is Godfrey Villa, I'm the Senior Manager Coastal Engineering Division of the Integrating Municipality and we're part of the engineering unit. Our responsibilities are at the moment the maintenance and design of all coastal infrastructure on the Integrating coastline which uh, comprises about 97 kilometres. The main aim of the project is to offer a unique way for correlating numerical models with actual field measurements. Traditionally, only a limited number of instrumentation was deployed within the area of interest. This is due to the enormous cost of oceanographic instruments, their deployments and recovery. For this project, a large set of economical and innovative instrumentation were deployed. Having numerous instruments collecting data allows for a broader picture both spatially and temporally for the dynamics of the study site. The comprehensive suite of instruments to be deployed for the study will include 45 tilt current meters to collect current speed and direction, a wind buoy to collect the prevailing weather conditions, three ADCPs to collect current data throughout the water column, two CT loggers, two tide gauges, three non-directional wave loggers and one temperature string. Water quality data is also to be collected on a grid during the field experiment. These sensors make up the Met Ocean Suite. In addition to collecting Met Ocean data, a full geophysical survey of the study area was performed. This consisted of a multi-beam bathymetric survey of the offshore area, a single beam bathymetric survey of the near shore and a side scan sonar survey. On the landward side, a topographic laser scanner was used to produce a digital terrain model of the beach. The aim of the first field day of the project was to deploy the larger Met Ocean instrumentation around the Vecchi's area. The instruments, including the wind buoy, the three ADCPs and temperature string were taken down to the Wilson's Wharf in Durban Harbour, where the workboat was moored. The instruments were then loaded up onto the T-craft. The wind buoy consists of an onboard solar power system, logger and Omar PB200 solid state ultrasonic wind sensor. The wind sensor has a built-in GPS and digital compass. It has the ability to record true wind direction and wind speed. It can also record the humidity and barometric pressure. The KwaZulu Natal Sharks Board kindly lent us a mooring position for the duration of the experiment for the wind buoy. An ADCP, or Acoustic Doppler Current Profiler, is a sonar device that has the capability of determining current speed and direction in bins throughout the water column. These devices are typically mounted on the bottom and send out a sonar pulse towards the surface. The Doppler shift within the returning signal allows for the calculation of the current parameters. Two ADCPs were supplied by Luanle Technologies based in Cape Town, South Africa. The third instrument belongs to Etzquini Municipality. The temperature string consists of six Thermocron eye buttons. These have the ability to record temperature and time and are accurate to a half degree. The units log temperature at five minute intervals. The eye buttons are placed in small stainless steel housings and separated at a one meter interval along the tether. The tether has a large weight at one end and a suitable flotation on the other. 
This configuration allows the temperature string to remain relatively vertical through the water column. The deployment sites for the instruments were chosen based on previous survey data. This information allows us to strategically place the sensors. The wind buoy mooring was located on the outside of Vecchi's near to Moyo Pier. One of the three ADCPs, the first, was deployed very close to the wind buoy, the second close to the northern breakwater of the harbour. This one was designed to collect currents moving in and out of the port, specifically the tidal currents. The third and final ADCP position was on the inside of Vecchi's and was placed at the proposed water intake site for the Ushaka Marine World. Each one of the ADCPs have additional instrumentation attached to them. Two had CT loggers and all three had wave loggers. There was also a tide gauge fixed to one of them. The aim of the second phase of the experiment was to deploy the high density grid of TCMs across the Vecchi's area. Tilt current meters are economical current instruments that were developed locally. They consist of a power system, a data logger, and a six degree of freedom motion sensor. The motion sensor has a three axis accelerometer and a three axis magnetometer. Each TCM records approximately 1000 reading from the sensor to an SD card every five minutes. This data is used to calculate the magnitude of the tilt and the tilt direction. These two parameters give us a proxy for current speed and current direction. Each TCM is a small self-contained unit that is easy to deploy. In its deployment configuration, the system consists of a clump weight and a tether from the weight. This is what we're going to be deploying today. It's an experimental tilt-based um, current meter. It's going off on the benches with a grid of 45 of them. Basically the clump weight sits on the bottom. We've got this galvanic release mechanism here, which after seven days will break and hopefully the mono will let this float to the surface for recovery. But this sits on the bottom like this and um, the magnitude of the current pushes it over and the, the amount of speed changes its tilt. And the direction that it tilts in is recorded by the onboard 3D compass. The 45 TCMs were loaded onto T-Craft in a few crates. All of the instruments fitted onto the deck in a single load. Once the instruments were loaded, we headed out to the deployment area. Pre-planned positions from the instruments were loaded into HiPack, which was used for navigation. As we passed each coordinate, we called to the back of the boat, where that particular instrument was dropped over the side. The boat does not need to stop to be able to deploy the instrument, it can keep on moving. The whole deployment exercise took two hours to complete. This fast deployment strategy allows for a large area to be covered rapidly and accurately. Once the Met Ocean instruments were deployed, the project moved to survey data collection. A detailed topographic survey of the Vetch's Beach was performed by a specialized mobile LiDAR mapping system that was developed to map sandy beaches along the KwaZulu-Natal coastline. This system allows us high mobility. On the KZD coastline, we are able to map up to 10 kilometers of coastline a day. That's taking tides into consideration, weather, and all the physical factors that impact the survey. The LiDAR platform consists of a 4x4 quad bike equipped with a high-precision RTK GPS system, a laser scanner unit, and a motion reference unit. These three sensors feed information to an acquisition unit. Each of the three sensor information is independently recorded to a unique SD card. The SD cards are then removed and taken into the office to be processed. From the results, we get highly accurate, high density XYZ data. This data can be visualized as a point cloud or can be gridded to produce 3D digital terrain model. From the gridded information, we can work out data such as beach volumes and beach widths. We can then develop cross sections at any point along the survey area that may be of interest. On the same day as the geophysical surveys, the water quality sampling component also commenced. Okay, so we've got the, the YSI, which is a multi probe water quality instrument. We did a 4x4 grid moving from near shore to outshore, inside the reef, outside. And what we were doing is getting a surface measurement and then going down as deep as we could, approximately one and a half to two meters, and getting a bottom reading. 
Um, the multiprobe allows us to look at turbidity, dissolved oxygen, salinity, a whole lot of, sort of water quality parameters. And um, the idea behind this is that we're going to link this to the uh, current meters and into a hydraulic model and see if the model can replicate this and calibrate the model using this data. Following on from the LiDAR survey, the shallows adjacent to the beach and the breakwater were surveyed using a single beam bathymetric sonar system mounted on an unmanned surface vessel and on a personal watercraft. Over here we have our unmanned surface vehicle, USV for short. It's basically a fiberglass hull with two electric uh, motors at the bottom which power it and steer it. Being a rudderless system it's very maneuverable. And then on board we have a survey grade echo sounder. The purpose of this vehicle is to, to obviously survey and it's highly maneuverable, highly mobile and can get into very shallow water, can survey basically where, where jet skis perhaps could not because of their draft. You can just put in your vehicle and, and survey wherever you wish. The majority of the bathymetric data in the study area was collected within a multi-beam echo sounder. The multi-beam only really becomes effective in a certain water depth. In the shallower sections, a single beam sonar is the more viable option. The USV has a Seed User Pro 200kHz single beam sonar system mounted in its hull. The USV can be controlled from a shore based operator or be pre-programmed with survey lines, which the USV would then traverse autonomously using the onboard autopilot. At the Vecchi site the USV operated only in manual mode. The same Seed User echo sounder was mounted on EnviroMap's personal watercraft to be used on the longer nearshore survey lines. Navigation was done using a Laurent's chart plotter. The main offshore geophysical data collection comprised of collecting multi-beam bathymetry and side scan sonar data from the survey vessel T-Craft. Our task today is to collect multi-beam sonar data in the Durban Vecchi's area. The sonar data will be used for a sediment dynamic study in the Vecchi's Basin. A project called the Durban Coastal Dynamics was established between Itagweni Municipality and Environmental Mapping and Surveying, as well as Kozulu Bowtie. The three companies will endeavour to collect detailed oceanographic data as well as hydrographic survey data of the Vecchi's Basin. The side scan sonar data will also be collected in the Vecchi's Basin area. The side scan has the ability to give us a good indication of where there's rock, fine grain sand, medium grain sand and gravel type materials. It does not give you any depth indication, it purely gives you a grayscale image of what the material type is that's down in the seafloor. A GPS antenna positions the actual transducer below it and a secondary GPS antenna gives accurate heading. The process to acquire that data will be a multi-beam sonar uses a sonar head to send out sound waves. These sound waves reflect off the seafloor and are received back by the sonar head. That data is integrated with motion and position data to form a digital map of the area. The, the survey will be carried out from a stable survey platform, the T-Craft. What we're looking at here is the digital acquisition component of the multi-beam system. This display gives you abil the ability to control range, gain, power level and pulse width on the sonar. These are independent controls that control the sonar directly. You've got various windows to do online quality control. There's a motion reference unit and GPS system on the mounted in the boat as well. So we've got a data acquisition system which is HIPAC and we've got a WASP multi-beam control mechanism. The sonar head is attached to a pole. That pole has got a rotary point on the top of the boat or on the gun of the boat. That pole rotates down alongside the boat and hooks into a bracket on, on the port side of the boat. This bracket stops in the same position every time so that all offsets remain consistent. The yellow portion is a multi-beam sonar transducer. This particular transducer has the ability to cover a swath of 120 degrees with half degree beam spacing. Uh, we'll be using this system for the hydrographic survey data acquisition. 
An important aspect of collecting good hydrographic data is to measure the sound velocity of the water column. This enables the software to correct any actual soundings that are collected according to the medium which the sound waves travel through. A valve port sound velocity profiler is what we are using and that will collect the profile that we require to correct the soundings for the day. These profiles will collect every six hours to determine if there are any variabilities in the profile and will also enable us to correct the soundings effectively. If we move any significant geographical area, we also collect another sound velocity profile. The Beach LiDAR, single beam, multi beam and site scan sonar DATS was sent back to the office for processing to create an integrated product to aid with the numerical modeling. After a deployment period of seven days, the first stage of recovery began with the retrieval of the wind buoy and the three ADCPs and temperature string. While all the instruments had a seven day galvanic release, these did not trigger within our estimated prediction time. The exceptionally cold water experienced during the deployment resulted in the galvanic releases not triggering. It is estimated that the releases would have required a further 24 hours to trigger. The project has a predefined timeline and it was decided to recover instruments on scheduled date. For this we used a free diving system, where the diver went down and either released the marker float or connected up a rope to the instruments for recovery. T-Craft was moored in the sheltered Vecchi's inner basin. She served as a base of operations for the recovery. A smaller vessel was used to locate and recover the TCMs. The smaller boat had a navigation system on board with the deployment coordinates of all the instruments. The boat traversed to each location and dropped a marker to aid the free divers. The divers followed the markers down to the seabed and attempted to locate and retrieve each sensor. The retrieval method proved very successful. On average we were able to drop the marker to within 2-3 to three meters of where the instruments were deployed. We were unable to recover the TCMs on a few sites. In the end we only lost three instruments, all which were located in close proximity to Vecchi's reef. Presumably unauthorized removal by free divers exploring the reef occurred. It was difficult to locate the temperature string as it had been tampered with. Its flotation and marker had been removed, as well as four of the six sensors. The remainder of the string was recovered from the seabed. Sediment samples needed to be collected in the study area. These sediment samples were collected at the same positions as the TCMs, 45 samples in all. After the TCMs were collected, the sediment samples could then be taken using a small funfian grab. The sampling procedure is as follows. The boat navigates to a sampling site and comes to a halt. The grab is then loaded, primed and lowered over the side. If the grab fails to bring up any sediment, the process is repeated. The samples are then sent to the EnviroMap lab for analysis of sediment grain size, carbonate content and geochemistry. Part of all the data that we're collecting from these uh, pilot projects and the mainstream projects feeds into um, coastal modeling software that we have. Um, our department has been doing a lot of in-house training and we're setting up models that we can use the data to calibrate and validate. Essentially what we're doing is confirming what the models are producing is actually what's happening in the actual field. Um, how the models actually work is we have comprehensive bathymetry data that has been acquired over several years. Um, we can use the wind waves, the river flows, any sort of water hydraulic contribution to the area, including the sand. We're running effectively three different models um, that are merging on the shoreline. One is a sort of an urban hydrology river flow um, model that, that provides sort of contamination via dirty water from the, from the catchment. Uh, merging with a coastal model which runs um, all the wave dynamics and that and then we link it to um, a morphodynamic model and subsequently one called DALWAC which is essentially a water quality model. Um, the modeling helps us understand things that you can't always see so we can calibrate on this data we're getting now and then from that we can create scenarios to test um, to see what can happen. A big part of the, the modeling procedures and the whole background to this is that um, with all the information that we're gathering, understanding it, we can actually correlate it from field data to modeling. What that allows us to do is get um, 
a certain degree of confidence in the models and the outputs. We can't sample all the time in the field, so what we do is we select certain periods that are different, be it high tide, low tide, winter, summer, seasonal variation, and we, we do field samples. Once we've got those, we run the model separately and we can correlate the two. Um, once the two start agreeing, we can actually then start forecasting or at least understanding understand what, what the dynamics are, even if we can't do field testing. So. Um, per se, let's say one of the rivers is contaminated with something and it spills out into the ocean. If we know what the wind and wave uh, field measurements are coming in real time from instrument, we can ascertain where that's going and maybe certain beaches would need to be closed down. Levechi's field experiment proved to be a successful trial of the instruments, methods and data processing needed to move forward with the Durban Coastal Dynamics project. The project would not have been as fruitful without the close collaboration of several parties and the vision of the Etiquini Municipality's Coastal Engineering Unit.